What makes it now? It's the same idea. It's period equals two pi square root. What makes it go faster? What makes it go slower? Um, angle measurement. Now, angle measurement would again theoretically not matter between zero and fifteen degrees. After that, it starts to matter. So, what is it that determines how long, how 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 much time it takes to go through a cycle, and how much it doesn't? A pendulum. The answer this question is for a pendulum. Okay. Is the length of the string? makes it take longer. The longer the string, the longer the time frame. Okay? So the longer the longer the string, the longer the time frame. So if you carefully look at grandfather clocks, they're all the same length. Okay? The other thing is divided by, well, there's another thing, Mr. Redney, it's probably in mass. It turns out it's not the mass. Mass doesn't matter as long as it's sufficiently big that the string doesn't matter. The material. So the only thing that matters is what planet you're on. Oh. What makes it go faster? Gravity. Yeah. This was actually tested on space, uh, on the uh, Endeavor. This is the it was also yeah. tested on the moon. We've had pendulums operate both on the moon and on the space shuttle in both places. It matched with this, not just nicely, but extraordinarily nicely. They just spend millions of dollars, millions launching of feathers and pendulums into space. Otherwise, how do you know, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what I. There, there's a. There's a. Yeah, what makes it happen is this: you have a force. You have a force proportional to how far it's displaced from the rest position. Okay? You have a force that's proportional to how far you're displaced from the rest position. It gets stronger the farther you're out from the, the, the rest position. The force is stronger from the rest position. The force gets stronger the farther you are from the rest position. The restorative force, another way to say it, restorative force, is try it gets stronger the farther you displace it, right? The farther I pull down the spring, the farther I pull out the pendulum. It gets stronger the farther I pull it out. So the formula of the circle of motion is the one that's There's two. Yes. There, there's actually, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That'll work. By the way, pendulums also work with this formula here. Pendulums also work with this formula here. Okay, well, that's not the formula. Oh. <laughs> This formula here. Pendulum's also working this formula here. Okay? And by the way, how do you calculate the frequency? Periods of this formula right here, right? So you can put the frequency right on in. No problem at all. One over whatever you get for this is this right here. That's why we do it this way in physics. All right. What's that trig teacher how to teach? I missed all of the two formulas. Uh, two formulas? I did. So those are the same thing, right? Sort of. We, this one's sine. We typically start in the middle, and we have to use a phase shift. We're physicists. We know we're going to start either at the low point or the high point, so I'm going to use cosine. And sometimes I'm going to use negative cosine if I want to start at the bottom. This is all you need to know because we're in physics class. Your trick teacher would love you to be able to translate between these two. Your physics teacher is telling you, meh. Here's a formula for you to use it. All right. Calculations. Example. A one kilogram block is attached initially to an unstretched spring of 100 newtons per meter. The spring stretches until it reaches equilibrium. The mass spring system is then pulled an additional 0.1 meters. What is the amplitude, period, frequency, speed at the rest position, speed at the maximum displacement, accelerates and the equilibrium position and accelerates the maximum displacement. <laughs> Holy mackerel! I've seen questions in there. Holy mackerel, we're going to solve for it all. And since I've got eight minutes, we're going to solve for all of it now. We got, we got 20. Like torture. Oh, crud. No, we got time then. Oh, that's We're good. 23. So, good thing. We're at 23 minutes. Okay, then I'll let you start, suffer a little bit. Thank you. Suffer with this problem just a little bit. Try try to figure out what you can figure out. Wait, it's Monday. <laughs> Too late. Figure out what you can figure out. No. Wait. Because if you figure it out, Saturday. you'll know it for life. If you don't, then I can't. What? Okay. We have to figure it out ourselves. Yes, meantime, I'm going to give you a totally useless piece of paper. Good. What is this useless piece of paper? This is an AP. This is the other AP test. Okay, I promise you two AP tests. Here I'm going to give you the second AP test. 
Do you have to turn this into me? No. When do you have to turn it into me? Never. Thank Can we you. get extra credit for that? No. Please, oh. Rusty, I need some. I, I don't. I, I, I don't want people to do it just because they're extra credit. I'll do it if anyway, but if you want to offer extra credit after, that'd be great. It's not really. I don't want people to, to, to storm through it just to get extra credit. Not necessary, Paul. Why not? Because <laughs> I finesse those headlines. Because <laughs> there's an answer sheet on here. I'll take it out. Yeah. After. Uh, what? This is <laughs> This is depressing. You can rip off like the last half of it. No, the last quarter of it. Oh, that's a very neat. Okay. So, this I don't expect to ever see from you again. Unless we turn it in for extra credit. Unless you turn it in for extra credit, you probably won't get it. No. So this is but, we can round pirates. if you're coming in for extra help during those study sessions, I'd like to talk about problems on this one. Not today, obviously, credit. but in the future. This is the one I want to talk about more, because hopefully we get to the stuff in class. But the other test, which maybe we won't, because I don't seem to ever get to that point where we can actually spend some time on it. I'm still drawing a picture for this. I forget what spring haunts it is. I'm going to ask for volunteers as I go along. Um, in a spring, I let it stretch until it's the mass is sitting on there not moving, right? Then I pull it down an additional 0 0.10 meters, and I let go of it. Okay? It's going to go up and down, up and down, 0.1 meters, theoretically, forever in our perfect universe. We really know it's eventually going to damp down, but our perfect universe for a while is going to work out like that. Okay, so our amplitude. How much is this thing going up and down? 0.1 meters. 0.1 meters. So our amplitude is 0.1 meters. I don't have to work any harder than that at all. Good work, Taylor. That's it. There, we're done with that like that. How do I figure the period of oscillation? Oh, I got this. Yes, ma'am. Plug it into the T equals. Plug in the formula. I got 2 pi equals square root of m over k. Mm -hmm. So that's 2 pi square root. The m I gave you was 1. one. K I one. gave you is 100. So I put that in my calculator, and I get point six three. Six. What? Three. -ish. Three. OK. So I'm going to go point six three seconds. That's how long it takes to go through a cycle. Mm -hmm. OK. If that's the period, what's my frequency? One over that. One over that. 1.56. 1. 1.5 or 6. 6. 6. 1.52. 1.6. 1.8. Nobody can use a calculator these days. All right, hold on. I can get this. We need rest 2 you, times pi. Is that? Okay, Ooh. divided by 10. Love it. 1 divided by shift answer. I'm getting 1.6, so I'm going to go 1.6. Yeah. 1.59 hertz. All right, so that's my 1.59 hertz. Okay, speed at rest position. Rest position is where I was sitting at the very beginning. It's also called the equilibrium position. That's two names for it. This is a spot where it starts. Okay, whoa. When I pull it down and let go of it, doesn't it isn't moving as it goes back through that same spot? has to move moving because it's got to go past that point and go back up there, right? And then go ahead. So that's what it's actually going to be moving its fastest. What? It's at that position right now, going to zero. All right, no, right. But then I pull it down and let go of it. They should right. load it as equilibrium. So equilibrium or rest position, or initial rest position. Okay, so as it goes back through that rest position, it's going its fastest. If that's the case, I have to figure out, and the only way I told you to do it before is energy, right? Oh. So it's going to be... Energy before because energy after. Okay. Energy before is one half k x squared. Energy because that's a spring, right? Pull it. Hmm. And then afterwards, I have one half mv squared. Because remember, the pendulum energy of a spring is one half k x squared. K is a spring constant. X is how far you pulled it back. The farther you pull it back, the more energy it has, correct? And the stronger the spring, the harder I pull, harder it is to pull back, the more energy it stores. Okay, so then I throw this in my calculator. I, I throw this in there. I get one half. K is 100. X is, uh, what is the, what's the one place where I know it's not moving? Right at the top. At the top, at the top and at the, the bottom, bottom are the yeah. two places where it's going to stop and then change direction. So it has to not be moving there. 
So that would be when my amplitude is my maximum. So that's going to be 0.1 squared. What is that? Oh, oh that's fine. Never equals one half. What's the mass? The mass is one. Is it one? Yes, one. What is my velocity? I got to solve for velocity. Put that on my calculator. I get velocity is one meter per second, looks right. like. What is um, x? Somebody double check that because I did it kind of dumbly. Yeah. Speed at maximum Aha! It's going to be what? Zero. Zero. I didn't write that. Oh, maximum. I wrote this. This should be up here. Okay, so speed at, speed at maximum. Speed at max is going to be zero. Because when it gets to the very bottom and the very top, it's going to temporarily stop before it changes directions. Yeah. Right? That makes sense. Okay. Wait, where'd you, what's X in that equation? What I put for X in this one? Yeah, acceleration. I, I said, here's the deal. What's the one place where it's not moving? Oh, well, where did X stand for? X is how far the string, spring is, is pulled, displaced, stretched. Okay. So what's the one place where it has no kinetic energy? At the bottom and at the top. So then it's going to stop and change directions. So that's the one place where if I plug this in, I don't have to add a kinetic energy over here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move forward. We'll figure this out in a moment. Okay. Uh, acceleration to equilibrium. When it's in the middle point, when we first let it sitting there, what's its acceleration? Zero. Zero. It's already been balanced, right? The spring is balancing your 9.8, right, at that point. So therefore, I'd have zero. Acceleration at equilibrium or the rest position. Equilibrium is zero meters per second squared. How am I going to find my acceleration at the end? F equals kx. I'm going to take your force and divide it by the mass. So F equals kx. That's the force the spring causes. MA equals K. MA is therefore equal to K, which is K times, and what X are we talking about at the max position? Either 0 0.1 or negative 0 0.1. Doesn't matter. It's going to give the same answer either way. I'm going to go ahead and put 0 0.1 in there so I can avoid the sign issue. So this is going to be mass, which is 1, acceleration, I don't know, spring constant, which is 100, times 0 0.1. So I get my acceleration would be 10 meters per second squared at my two ends. This is about all you can calculate with your skill sets in mathematics. There's no, almost nothing else they can make you do. This is the whole entire, every single enchilada problem right here. Okay? You can do all of these. You can do everything on a spring. And none of this is, very little is, with the exception of the, the period that we talked about before, is new. Almost all this is stuff we talked about in the dim and distant past. Hopefully it's starting to come back to you as you look at the AP test. Yes? So, well, you got the 10 meters second squared. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it be... That plus the negative 9.8 squared. Because the spring is already stretched, already balanced that out. When I put the mass on top, what does it do first? Let me let me let me let me steal this for a second. When I put the mass on here for the very first time, oh, it's already holding it up, right? If I and this is the right one, which one? Where's my one? That, okay, here's anyway. Okay, when I put it on the first time, here here's the string on stretch, but what's going to happen? Oh, it's going to get to where it's equal there. Now, this is the place where the force of gravity is equal to the force of weight. Those are equal to each other. Okay. So after that, any extra stretching is to change its direction. Okay. And that's why. It is a little tricky. And that is an idea that's not easy to follow. But we say from the equilibrium position, that's the point at which the spring bounces out. Um, by the way, this also works, and I can't demonstrate it very well. If you have a really good spring and a mass, and you do it sideways, like on a table, and you, you pull it like this, it'll go whoop, 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 if you have frictionless. I don't have that, so you don't get to see it. But, but it'll go back and forth. It'll do the exact same equation, exact same mass, exact same spring, thing, everything's the same. The only difference is the equilibrium position would be the unstretched spring, rather than having it stretch a little bit because you have to deal with weight. Okay? That was awesome. All right, we covered a lot of ground there. You have some homework to play with.